one. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. I'm Alex Perez. I'm Mike Morales here in, in humid and hot San Antonio. We, we have had, uh, it's, it's steamy, it's tropical, it's tequila weather out here. As long as it's not steamy and smelly. No, no, I actually applied deodorant, so I'm, I'm, good. I'm good. How's what's how's it how's uh, how's life in the uh, studio area fifty four? Fifty four. Wait, wait. That's studio fifty four, area fifty one of tequila. Southern California, a hub for tequila. Yes. And and we're doing quite well. Good. And tonight good we are going to be trying. I'm excited. We have look at that. We have avion. Oh, see that? You know, um, for those of people who, have, who follow us on, on Tequila Aficionado, we had done a podcast, a rather lengthy podcast, on the Avion Blanco. That was a while back. I was still in New Mexico. And uh, at the time, we could only get the Blanco. And we're going to revisit the Blanco a little bit later on, but uh, we never had a chance to actually get to the Reposado and the Añejo. And, you know, you... Just looking at the packaging alone, look at look how beautiful that is. And you know, Alex, you've seen the T-shirts and the, you know, the the branded material from uh, from Avion. Uh, anybody who knows the the history of the of the company, it's it's owned by the guy who used to own Marquee Jet, Ken Austin. He's one of the owners. He's the main the main guy. And so it, everything is kind of like airplane related. Avion means airplane. So on the sides of the bottle says uh, salida y entrada, you know, like uh, like it does when you get to the airport in Guadalajara. So salida llegada. llegada. Oh well, salida y entrada. You know, I don't know. Entrada. And, oh, by the way, it's signed. I don't know if you can see that or not, but see, yeah, it's yeah. it's also signed. Um, Alex, this reposado is really light. Do we know how long it's been aged at all? On the POS, it says six months. So these the type of uh, the type of wood. So this must be like a, a say an oak aroma. So but it's just it's like a used barrel though, right? Because because this is really a, like a like a a light, uh, yeah, very light, very light, like a light straw color. I mean, I mean, it's I, not even, it doesn't even come. It doesn't. I can't even see too much yellow in there. Yeah, it's, it's if really you pale, real pale color. Yes, very pale. If you can see that on the on the screen there, it's just really pale, which is okay. I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. Probably just enough to to uh, you know rough. Differentiate from, from the blanco. Yeah. Um, Beautiful legs on the glass, coming down on the sides of the glass. You know, you don't see very many reposados a, a, aged um, this lightly. You know, I, I'm I'm assuming this is a used barrel that they're using. Probably, usually you know, darker. Yeah. Unless they're filtering a little bit, but I don't see why they would do that. Not, me neither. I I don't see a reason why they would. This is a double distilled tequila, so it's not you know. It's got a very floral nose. Yes. You know, I've had this bottle for a little while. Both you and I have. I know you. You've just opened yours. I just opened it. Yeah, um, but I still get a little bit of alcohol on the on the top there. Not a lot. Just just enough to make it interesting. And we're not. We're not running this through an aerator, so so whatever we're getting is just you know what we're getting. There is a little there's a little bit of wood in there. Yeah, you can smell the wood, so smell a little bit of the caramel. There's some fruit coming through. I don't necessarily detect the cherry that the POS says. No, I I don't either. Uh, there I am getting like a. Maybe like a dried fruit, but not necessarily cherry. I am you know? getting watery mouth. <laughs> so we should try it, right? Right. <laughs> mm. 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 
sorry, my, my spit bucket for the evening. Um, it lingers. Yeah, it's got a nice mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. It's actually full, full on the mouth. It coats your palate quite a bit. Yeah, it does actually. Um, it it delivers more, I think, on the on the. Once you get past the lips, it delivers more than it, than maybe the the nose does, at first. This is nice. I, I like the red bull. Now, what do you think? Do you think this is cocktail worthy? It is cocktail worthy. I I'm I'm partial to uh, to sipping in this one though. Mm hmm. But it's got a lot of neat things going on in there. The 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 nose continues to evolve on on my glass. Well, the the yeah. now the finish is is rather short to medium. You know what I mean? It's not it's not a real long finish. It doesn't it doesn't linger so much in your throat as it does on your palate. But it's actually it's very satisfying. It's well balanced. You can taste just a tad of, of, of vanilla on the on the uh, on my tongue. Did we say that there were some uh, notes of uh, any kind of nuts or almonds or anything like that? Uh, no nuts in the other than you and me. No nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we have it to does, be nuts. It does. I mean, the, uh, everything's objective. I mean, whoever tasted and put these notes down, that's what they got in their in their palate. So. Well, you know, they they sometimes they hire, especially with somebody like a company like uh, like Avion. You know, the, the the story. If you if you've heard our our previous podcast, you know all about the story about how they became the uh, a character. To Avion became a character in Entourage. Uh, and that was when when it was originally the, the HBO series. Now uh, we're we're doing this this video um, years later. I mean, it's been maybe three four years now, and they've actually had the Entourage is no longer on HBO, but they have done an Entourage movie. Uh, and I understand Avion is also a big part of of the movie. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what how that all turns out. Um, Ken Austin has a, 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 a really solid background, not just in, in, in um, uh, not just in the airplane and business world, but it turns out Alex, he used to work for Seagram's. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that until uh, one of the articles that, that came up on our, um, uh, on our alerts, uh, he was interviewed and it turned out that he, he, his previous background was working for Seagram's, and so tequila was kind of a, a a passion for him anyway. You know, Seagram's was an old company. Seagram's, you know, before they were uh, before they were bought out, um, those guys they those guys really blazed some trails. They were kind of like Mad Men. You know, the, they were they were there at the beginning of the of the of, of you know the, the 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 incline for 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 spirits in general. Yeah, they really pushed uh, the brands through. Um, to, to a lot of the brands we have today. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Importer too. So you know he has a, a, a solid history. Personally, I think he's a, he's a great guy, and I, I know they don't need us, Alex. You know, because because as far as brand of promise and things like that, but it really is a, a like you said, it's a it's a fine sipper. If you'll notice, I poured a blanco. Take a look at the the difference between. And I don't know my lighting here isn't the greatest, but. There's almost very little difference between the yeah. Blanco and, and the Reposado. <laughs> so, you know, aging it in, in the barrels that, we, that, it, that they have uh, just takes the edges off. And I think, I think that was the original intention is they didn't really want to lose a lot of the characteristics from the Blanco. Because as I recall, you and I really enjoyed the Blanco. I loved it, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, wonderful tequila. Really, uh, all the hype. I know you, you, you folks see a lot of the hype and... and you know, is it really, is it, is it a real tequila and, and all that stuff? Believe me when I tell you that, that this, this is the real deal. These guys are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are really one of the smart people in the business. Um, they, they may have the wherewithal to, to, to you know, to uh, eventually one day be, uh, you know, that 
that that top cat, you know, in the in in the in the in the. I don't even want to call this mass produced because I know that they really watch the quality. Uh, I mean, as as much as a uh, as much as a, a mass produced tequila can be watched uh, and supervised, they they try to do it. And I, and I think that these 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 are the smart companies to watch for. These are the ones that are going to survive. Um, what do you think? I mean, you know, I can go on and on. It's great, I think it's a great repo. Uh, I remember the blanco. I look forward to tasting it again. Mm -hmm. I think it's a strong, it's a strong tequila, and I think it's the price point is just right. I've seen it in the stores. Um, I think this is a, a go-to brand that 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 seems to be consistent with with the quality. Well, see, there you go. I totally agree with you. I, I think uh, I think if we nominate this at all uh, for any kind of brand of promise category, it might even be in the legacy category. It it it's rather it's probably not old enough to be a legacy tequila. But I think it's headed in that direction. It's positioning itself for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I think I think it's a it, it really is one of those brands that you can you can count on. Um, I uh, I I think people would be real real surprised when we tr when we try the blanco because I I want your your opinion on the blanco because um, I know you and I fell all over ourselves on on it when we had it the first time and you can you can check back on that audio podcast it's on our website just run the search on on the website for avion it'll come up and you can listen to it it's it's about 40 minutes long it's a, you know take some time you know for for per some of yon you know and and listen because um I, we're going to revisit this blanco it, it, in, in one of our uh, future podcasts here or video shows and um i think i think we're both going to be pre pleasantly surprised but yeah, I, why not? I, I think it's a, I think it's a legacy. I think it's a legacy of nominee for Brand so. of Promise. I think so. I, I think it's a great one. I do too. Uh, very well worth getting, and uh, that's that's our recommendation. So yeah, I, and it's and it's, e and it's easy to find. Yeah, they're everywhere that's now. Why, that's why I think it's a go to it's a go to brand. Yeah, it's it, a brand that you can count on for for a good a good sipper and and a good cocktail. There you go. I'm Mike Morales. I'm Alex Perez, and you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAfficionado.com. Sip wisely. <laughs>